psychiatrist slash psychologist slash therapist slash doctors of reddit what was the most dangerous moment you have lived through while with a patient therapist here this happened to a mentor of mine he was working in a community clinic in another city he was getting ready to head out for the day when the secretary pulled him aside asking him to do an emergency intake for a client who came in claiming to be in crisis Mentor agrees and heads to the waiting room to call the guy back. Mentor said as soon as he opened the door to the waiting room he had a weird feeling. He brought the guy back to his office and made the decision to sit behind his desk for the intake, something he never does. Mentor asked the client what brought him in. The client screams, I'm Street, Francis of Assisi, and I'm destined to die. He rips open his shirt to reveal cuts all over his chest, then pulls out a knife and says, and you are destined to die too. I honestly don't know how my mentor thought of this, but he immediately slammed his hands on the desk and screamed, Street. Francis of Assisi. Holy crap. What an honor. This caught the attention of the secretary who cracked open the door, saw the knife, and called the cops. I guess my mentor spooked the guy, because he took off down the hall, and out a back door. The cops had a man and on their hands for several hours, and eventually found him. Never recovered the knife. The lesson my mentor wanted me to take from this event? Never be afraid to be crazier than your clients. My mother-in-law was a family doctor. One night I went to her practice to drive her home, and was sitting in the waiting area. The place is emptying out, and I'm the only one left. The receptionist goes downstairs to get a coffee cause the last patient is with the doc and she just has to do paperwork when they come out. So I'm all alone when this haggard looking guy wheels in in a wheelchair. He wheels over beside me. He's coughing and sounds like and looks like death. Anyways, last patient walks out before the receptionist is back. A few minutes later out comes my mother-in-law and sees this guy. She says immediately, Mr. Please leave. He starts on some crazy mumbling ramble about how he's in so much pain, and he can't even walk anymore, and a bunch of other shit, but I remember explicitly the I cannot walk anymore statement. So of course, she says something like, if you do not leave I'm going to have to call the police, and the fucking guy jumps out of the chair, can't walk my ass, and runs at her. Now it wasn't super fast by my standards, at least at the time, I was like a 25 year old in decent shape then, but he was going to fucking mess her up by what I could tell. Thankfully I was able to get up, and sort of semi tackle him against a wall, before he got to her. But fucker was strong. I couldn't actually believe what I was seeing. He said he couldn't walk, and now he could wrestle, it was a bloody miracle. So anyways, Dr. Mother-in-law locked herself in the reception office that's glassed in. Apparently this kind of thing happens more than just once, which is scary. In a house, she does that, and I let the guy go, and he didn't seem like he was gonna mess with me. But I think in retrospect I probably should have kept him tackled or whatever, in case he had a knife. But I thought I was invincible cause I was young. So I just stand and watch as he swears at her for a while through the glass and starts banging on it. And it was as if I wasn't there. I thought he might come at me or try to hit me, but no he was just boxing the glass in front of him. The one funny part was the secretary opened the door to come in and saw the guy and spilled her coffee and ran like the devil away. The look on her face was priceless. But lunatic man was oblivious. Maybe like 5 minutes later a couple of cops did show up and weirdly the guy kinda calmed down when they did. They cuffed him and took him away and then we did reports and like an hour later I was able to finally drive her home. But she said the guy just wanted drugs and she saw that a lot. I still thought it was crazy he couldn't walk. I did in homework family therapy. I had a parent who lived in a remote area and sessions usually ended in the early evening. They had some pretty significant mental health issues and had identified me as the primary cause of a lot of their current stressors, communicating with child welfare services slash crisis services when there was a risk of harm. One evening they were pretty agitated and started telling me how much they hated me, and to prove it, they described the very specific dream they'd had the night before of decapitating me and throwing my body parts into the local river. I immediately left, of course it was winter, and I see in dark and they screamed at me from their front porch that I couldn't abandon them while I drove off. Honestly, I really believe in the home 
and community therapeutic model, but one of the main reasons why I left is that it felt inherently unsafe. I worked with women with abusive husbands who absolutely knew I was helping them plan to leave. Parents who knew they were going to lose their children. Based on the work we did what I reported. You get a lot of work done sitting at someone's kitchen table, but the trade off the safety and security of working in public space. Used to work 911. Had a frequent flyer who we affectionately called Gravel Pit Jim. Jim was crazy as shit and a felon, and lived out of his car at an old gravel pit, hence the name. I can't remember what his deal was, but he checked all the behavioral disorder boxes that started with schizo. A part-time drug addict, he called pretty reliably with the inside scoop on the local dealers. Literally every call I took from this guy stared, so I got this intelligence which would lead to him tattling on his dope man. This was actually pretty useful, and our units learned a lot from his leads. Jim and I got to be somewhat familiar, he'd call the suicide hotline who would aggravate him, or simply hang up, and then he'd contact us in a rage. We talked enough, that he decided he liked me, and he'd typically call around 11 or midnight, almost on a schedule. I can't say I was ever personal with the guy, he'd talk and I'd listen, but we'd go around for a while, and then we'd move on with our nights. I treated him human, if nothing else. If he called and got anybody different, he'd ask for me and then dutifully wait while I cleared up whatever crisis and got to him. Not friendly, but cordial. He and I did this for around a year, then one night he drove off a bridge with me on the phone. For whatever reason he decided to come into our jurisdiction. A large bridge led into it and he aimed for the guardrail. Don't know why, he didn't say anything different or special from what I can remember, he just checked out. I always kinda had the suspicion he was coming to see me, maybe it was for the best that way, probably he realized that. He wasn't the first guy who died on my line or even the most graphic, but he was definitely the one I knew the best. This monster of a man, easily 2 meters tall and 200 plus KILO, with the emotional intelligence of a baby. Disabled, he was told there were no activities for the day, and couldn't cope with that, and started smashing the place up. Police were called, thank god he did not attack any staff or residents. He looked like he could squeeze my brain out with two of his fingers. Coworker had some resident face him with a knife and say they, the voices in his head, are telling me to stab you. Coworker told him, that was not true and to put the knife away, which he did. Please note that people with a schizophrenic disorder, are way more likely to be the victim of violence than the perpetrator. In this case, there was no violence. A blig not me post. My dad was a social worker slash case worker for a very long time in SF in the 70s, and as the story has been related to me by him, by my half brother's mom, his wife at the time, my half brother, and my dad's best friend, he got a call saying one of his cases was having a break, and had locked herself in a hotel room. So my dad finds the room, can't get in, goes to the room directly above it, Climbs out of their balcony, and lowers himself onto his case's balcony, 9 stories up. 9. He then gets inside, just as she cuts both of her wrists and starts coming at him with the knife. He gets the knife, don't know what he did with it, bear hugs her, and carries her into the elevator, and then out onto the street, where an ambulance was waiting. The police finally showed up about 5 minutes after the whole thing ended. Comes home covered in blood. I used to do psych rehab in the community, and had a couple scary clients. One was extremely ill. He was about twice my weight and had one. 5 feet on me, 5 feet 2 inches 115 pound female, he was sitting next to me, and kept trying to brush the bugs off my upper thigh, and then told me he was gonna cut my arms and head off, and watch me rot in hell I called 911, and he was taken to the hospital, and released that night, I called his provider, to report he needed care and the hospital released him, and he refused to even adjust his meds, I had another client that hated me, he was on house arrest for attempted murder and I would dread his visits, because he would fly off the handle for absolutely no reason, like if I wouldn't let him use my cell phone or drive him somewhere, I quit. I've been the subject of erotomania in my patient with psychosis. Erotomania is listed in the DSM-5 as a subtype of a delusional disorder. It is a relatively uncommon paranoid condition, 
that is characterized by an individual's delusions of another person being infatuated with them. Open bracket close bracket. The object of the delusion is typically unattainable due to high social or financial status, marriage, or disinterest. The object of obsession may also be imaginary, deceased or someone the patient has never met. Delusions of reference are common, as the erotomanic individual often perceives that they are being sent messages from the secret admirer through innocuous events such as seeing license plates from specific states. Apparently I look like his ex-wife, who he tried to strangle. He was staring at me, completely fixated, during the admission interview which is not uncommon. I started to be the only person who could convince him to take his medication, de-escalate aggressive episodes, etc. Then all the love letters started to be slipped under the door to the nurse's station. He was moved to the next ward and required restraint and seclusion because he choked a nurse to try and steal his keys to get back to my ward. Last I heard, he was offering money to other patients who would be discharged soon to hang around the car park between 6. 7 p.m. to figure out which car I drive. I work in addiction medicine. Had a schizoaffective patient that would come in every so often after going off his meds and going on a cocaine and heroin bender. The last time I saw him, he was off his meds, high as a kite, and actively hallucinating that there were monsters in the room. He told me that's what he saw, and he was watching them while he talked to me. Everything was okay at first, but the second I put my stethoscope on his chest, it was like a switch flipped. I saw muscles clench, and he stopped answering questions, and got this thousand yard stare. I immediately got a sinking feeling in my stomach, and had the clearest thought that, this dude is going to strangle me with my stethoscope. I stepped back and said, okay, we are done, and he got up, and walked out into the hall. Stap dose of Hordel and all ended well. But he scared the shit out of me in that moment. Therapist. Worked in a severe behavior school. Lots of fist fights with teens. Sometimes a foot taller than me. By fist fights I mean. Me dodging their punches. And trying to get them in the state legal restraint. That assumed you would be bigger than the person you were restraining. Very stressful job. While I had it. But never boring. And very rewarding as these teens respected the shit out of me. And would really listen to my advice. Barring blackout rages. I. 22F. Was an intern in the internal medicine area. I entered a triple room. One room. Three patients. And greet the first patient. About 55 meters. Who had just arrived from her. To recover from a heart attack. Without any notice. He got up. And started to beat the s asterisk 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 out of me. Ripping his eye lines and monitor in the process. I tried to defend me, and the family members from the other beds and nurses came to help me and submit him, with the help of a dose of diazepam. Turns out, he had had a massive stroke a year which damaged his frontal lobe and cortex leaving him extremely aggressive, that's also why he didn't had any family with him. Another time, also as an intern, in a public hospital from one of the most dangerous Mexican cities, in 2012 just where the drug war was at its height, a senior lady came for a breast tumor, but upon seeing it, we decided it was far too advanced for any surgery or treatment, palliative care was all we can do for her. Her son, while carrying a gun, prohibited by law and only carried by mafia, threatened the oncologist and me that he'll come to us if anything happened to her mama. I finished my term in that hospital a few weeks later and vow never to return. These and other motives. When I was working at a care facility as a nurse aide a giant man came in with alcohol induced dementia. These patients are always high risk for being extremely aggressive and violent. He had plenty of issues the first day he came. Attempting to run away harassing the women trying to start fights with the men. The average age of people I cared for was mid 70, but this man was in his late 50s, so we had to keep a close eye on him. As the strong woman of the team I was always the one called to help manage him in case he got violent. After about a week he decided he has had enough of me impeding on his life in such a way, and decided to go for me. So there I was a 23 year girl 5 feet 10 at 145 ibs trying to keep a 6 feet 5, 250 ib muscular man from strangling me with a belt and the only support I had was a 5 tall scared girl tugging on his shirt the best she can in an attempt to pull him off of me all while a bunch of elderly people stood around. Us screaming. Must have been quite a sight. 
Fortunately I was able to get out of the hold he had on me, and some other men who worked in the facility were able to keep him from harming others, until he calmed down. The next day he was transferred to a better equipped facility, but goodness that was a rough week. While so many stories come to mind. I've worked in both male and female prisons. One comes to mind where I, 24F, was meeting with an inmate in his 40s. He was double my size at least. For reference looked a similar size to Michael Clark Duncan. He had several anger issues, and we had been meeting, so I could provide psych testing. He has developmentally delayed, and because of his size, when he got mad he could pick up, and throw a whole metal trash bin. He told me he goes into rage blackouts, and didn't want to hurt me, if he ever got mad. He told me he likes roses and fake ones work too. I bought some at a store, and kept them on me. Sure enough one day another staff member kept coming in the office to interrupt us. Eventually asked us to terminate the session early. I saw him boiling up about to blow. He stood up, and clenched his fists. I handed him the flowers, and he sat back down sort of petting them till he calmed down. I've been working with inmates for years. Been in between inmates fighting, been around pepper spray, severe self-harm, threats, those moments where you realize the person across from you is a psychopath who truly wants to hurt you, but I never felt like something really bad was going to happen to me or someone else then if I hadn't, have listened to him, and had those flowers.